So now I'm going to show you examples of what not to do. These are pictures of instances where one or more of the cardinal rules of bridal or formal hairstyling have been broken because I find that as much as you can look at beautiful examples of bridal updos on Pinterest, that doesn't necessarily help you in understanding what to do to achieve that look or what to avoid doing in order to achieve that look. Sometimes looking at things that didn't go quite as perfectly in the execution of a hairstyle can make you understand what you ought to be looking out for and avoid doing to keep the style perfect. Okay, so come on over and I'll show you some pictures. So, uh, so this first one of Amanda Seyfried, as you can see, one of the first things off the bat that I notice is this gap at the crown of her hair. So, I mean, this should have been obvious, in my opinion, to the stylist. And as I mentioned, the front of the bride is what matters the most. If you're going to make some errors, make it at the back of her head, right? Not something like this, where we have a big gap. This could have been easily solved, right? So be careful on what's going on on the front, obviously. Then we have this... I'm presuming this is a bride as well, but we've got some problems going on at the back of the crown. Now, this is so common. I'm going to show you a few more pictures of errors in trying to achieve some sort of volume or density in the hair through teasing, but that the entire structure of the hair is off kilter in one way or another. Okay. In this instance, we had a lot of teasing going on at the very kind of lower back of the crown, but none at the top of the crown. So we have this almost straight slope at the back of her head. So that's a very, very odd silhouette that that creates. Not to mention, we've got some really loose strands here that I just want to mention will probably start to fall during the wedding. So. If you're, if you're asked to do a style like this by a bride, then get her to really shake her head at the end of the session so that you see if there are any pieces that are likely to come out. Like, you know, most brides will just kind of like wiggle their head a little bit. No, she's got to, she's got to really shake her hair so you know that it's going to be secure for the day. Then we've got another example of some, oh, there's so much wrong with this one. Okay. Um, so this is Blake Lively. So again, we've got an issue with how the volume and this bouffant sort of, uh, updo has been created. We've got a little bit of volume at the front. The majority of the volume was put again at the back, very back of her head. And then we've got this sharp sort of drop off before the rest of her hair comes down. So this is off balance, as you can see. We want to have a more even amount of volume towards the front here by her face to be able to have some balance going on there. You can also see that there's definitely a lot of teasing that's showing there. There's not a lot of hair that was left out to be able to cover up what either she or her stylist did here. Two rules broken. Terrible. Okay, I'll show you another example of some bad teasing going on. Okay, again, this is a, a bride with a few problems going on in my opinion. I'm not entirely sure whether the bride asked to have these sort of straight pieces of hair sticking out of her head 
but I can almost guarantee you that she wouldn't be thrilled if she saw this gap in the hair. Right? So you want to look to see if there are any sort of gaps like that when you're doing an updo, particularly if you're doing a, a more structured bun. But this is pretty bad because the stylist was trying to achieve volume, but basically pinned the hair in place rather than creating a fully teased structure to support the hair that was going to go over top of it. And as you can see, the, it's not a great shape either. Basically, it would have been preferable, if anything, to bring at the back of the crown there, bring the hair back in a little bit so that we have a more rounded silhouette overall and it would flow a little bit better. So this is Hilary Duff. Uh, a couple problems going on here. Number one, you can see some of the teasing that's going on underneath the hair at the front, um, at her forehead there. But also, it seems to me that the stylist used too much product. Because the hair looks almost greasy, for one thing, but it's not flowing together well the individual sort of sections of hair are really obvious because there's so much product on there. It just doesn't flow together. So two couple of things to be careful of there. Cover up your teasing, of course, but be careful not to overuse product. I had a bride come to me once that had gone for a previous trial at an, another company and she had naturally curly hair, and she had uh, wanted it all blown out and straightened. The stylist ended up using Moroccan oil, which is a good product, but he sat, almost saturated her hair with it. So it was really heavy with it, and then he ran his flat iron through, and she said it took her days and days of washing before it came out. So she said it was disgusting how awful it was in her hair. So Moroccan oil is a great product, but you have to use it very sparingly or it will really weigh down the hair. Any silicone-based serum, you want to be careful of that sort of thing. Even hairspray, right? When you're doing your finishing spray especially, be careful not to start making it look like a crispy, crunchy, you know, hairdo, you still want to keep a little bit of a, um, you know, an organic feeling finish to it. That's really the style these days. Right? 